Good afternoon, good evening. This is Cord Killinger of the Bombshell JKU. We're here with the first stop of the 2023 Great American Crawl. What are you doing? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you find a hat? Did you? Day two. We broke off, we ran over to Crazy Eights. It's a playground. Great, great obstacles all the way through. Correct. This is like little rock crawler territory. If you've got a purpose-built buggy with a single seat, you can go anywhere you want out here and you can do it in no time flat. You know, we hit the very first obstacle was one that's like real vertical. You pull up on it and you just keep pulling up and pulling up and it just, it feels like you're never gonna actually crest, but once you do, it just kind of pulls over and it's a nice ride. those burnt obstacles, there's a lot of aspects that play part in whether they work or not. Wheelbase is one of them. Longer is better. The next thing is suck down winches and or limit straps, you know, because you get the rig so far up in the air, your front suspension unloads, right? What does that mean? Huh? What does that mean? Cords long, cords heavy, cords deep, unloads pretty good. Uh, I learned today that cord does not like that. I put tires on it yeah. and got really light and really remembered that, oh yeah, I set this up for a V8. I'm missing 200 pounds from the front end. Mm -hmm floated a tire and started smoking and said, no, nah, I'm just gonna back out of that one. How'd that feel? Shitty. <laughs> you got a meter in your belly, an inclinometer, right? And you know, up and down and side to side, that meter gets more fine tuned the longer you do it. Well, the obstacle is like, I'm, I'm six foot. The obstacle is like above my head. So it's way up here. And the Jeep feels like when you're in it, that you're straight up you've got the right track width and wheelbase combination, you can climb it super simple. The guys that, the people that were having trouble in it were either really short wheelbase or really heavy. It's good. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm out. I would have liked to try taking a gladiator up that, you know, touring on the, uh, the bliss of not having a vehicle here and wanting to try stuff, you know. We're coming back to Kingman. 
You're right though, it really didn't feel that bad. And it, it is very much, I would say, an eight, nine, ten. Definitely oh, running into the buggy yeah. scales. A couple sections really reminded me of Sledge. Think of the hardest stuff on Pritchett, and that's literally what you're in yeah. the entire time. Today, especially, Nick came around and we we nailed some stuff that, you know, I hope I hope he was happy with too. But you know, they we got some good lines in. Hopefully, the videos will show that we we got it up some some pretty dumb stuff today, which was that was a good time for sure. We always try. You always try. Man. That's always sometimes, good. sometimes we don't make it, but we try. Well, when you reach for the sky, sometimes sometimes you just miss. Yeah. Thumbs down. <laughs> well, good luck, dude. I hope you don't miss today. Thank you, sir. I don't want to see any more marks on that hood. <sighs> A chance to sit back with a buddy of mine, Jim, uh, one of the original AZ wheelers out here, uh, Kingman Crawlers, in fact, is the name of his crew, and uh, sit in a buggy. Actually did pretty good through there. We didn't have to take any bypasses or really didn't even have to reposition anything. I'd rather identify as a buggy than a Jeep anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> Driver, and you gotta crest that thing and stay in it, right? How am I gonna get all my or just go through it and get out of the damn way? As a team, I don't know if I've seen another team like that. You know, they are symbiotic almost. Uh, Jason, ha he has to use his words when he's spotting other people, but when he's spotting Trey, it is nothing but hand gestures. You know, like they just, they work extremely well as a team. That's all we did today. Um, so today we went on a trail called Crazy Eight. It's named that way because you basically go into a set of canyons and you make a figure eight. So you run up a canyon and then you drop back down one and then just do a figure eight like that.
What do you think of this thing, Cord? I, I'm having second thoughts about the engine. I'm yeah. thinking I need to uh, <laughs> get a refund. Sorry, Adam. Deal's off. <laughs> I got a new purpose for that cash. The missus is going to love me when I get home. Jim here has been amazing today. Let me hang out in the rig and show me what a buddy, buggy can do. So first time being a passenger on a trail like this and first time in a buggy. We are on ditch steer. local guys in fact mm -hmm. and he managed to get into this ledged v-notch mm -hmm. well he managed to get all of his weight on that driver's side rear tire and just crush it like a marshmallow underneath the ledge There's younger yeah, guys uh, running around doing this. Yeah, right? My 70 year old joints <laughs> just can't do this shit anymore. No. <laughs> His buddy, who actually made it up, had to wrap around and drop a steel cable line down over the rocks yeah. to grab him from the side. It's the only way to get him out because he, I mean, he gave it a good go. He gave it a good go yeah, to try to get himself so out. He was so wedged under there. He turned like a 42 into, into like a 22. 22. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. <laughs> got up onto it and the first thing I did was I said well, what about the rear tire he's like it's okay so we just he got me lined up real good and we just went up it
Dominic stepped up his game tremendously since the last time I seen him and you know to see him take the four door JK through there and his confidence. I think I had almost more fun today going with Dominic just because he ran that four door deal dude. You know, I mean he handled business today and he did a good job and you know made me proud so that was cool. Caveat, little history about that channel. So that's where the military would take the old, the army back in the day, were taking their Jeeps, stress testing them through that canyon. Not necessarily into the waterfall, but they would come mm -hmm. through and they'd, they'd run ops back in the day. So I mean, we're talking 40, 50, 60 years yeah. ago. Um, that one actually had a little more like uh, bedrock, I guess, so it was more traction. So you just kind of cruise down there. And then it was just uh, basically an easy wash to take out. There were some boulders and stuff to go through. And I mean, it, that one was just pretty mild, just getting back to the beginning. And Crazy Eights is named Crazy Eight because it is a figure eight trail. You go up one side, loop around, come down, go back up the other side, loop around again. It put us right back where we started and uh, people got to hit that first obstacle uh, maybe a second and third time. Give it a retry if they didn't make it the first time or just play around on it. That was, that was fun for the end of the day and, and finishing early. Hold on a minute. Give me a second. Let me study. I need a study. <laughs> Go around, come in right here, yeah. and then out that way. And then we actually uh, found a little kind of sideline right around that, and a bunch of people wanted to do that. So we had a good time on that first obstacle, just kind of spending a little bit of extra time. Several in our group that kind of wanted to get some redemption on it. They tried the first time around and ended up not getting it and kind of backing off and saying, hey, you know, just take it easy because we're starting the day. But by the time we got back there, I mean, we were making good time. Dom came in. Dom came in. And just like one shotted the big obstacle he couldn't get all morning. Oh, yeah. I was happy I got a second try at it, but it, anybody, you're standing straight up. Everybody who did it, you're standing straight up. It feels sketchy, but you have to put trust in your spotter to get you up it, and once you're up there, you're good. Let's get that rock out of there. Yeah, but I won't be able to back up.
Well, Dennis over there, I'm, I'm gonna blame it on him. I seen it coming, but I, you couldn't put two fingers between the freaking back corner and that rock. And I was like, you know what? We're just gonna, we're gonna let it pan out and hopefully for my benefit that it don't scratch that pretty thing. And How'd that feel? Way better. It was nice to actually do something today. I love being a passenger, don't get me wrong. Um, but I like my driver's <laughs> my driver's seat. I like to be, uh, maybe it's a, a little bit of control freak in me. But it felt good. It I felt think you good. could fit maybe two sheets of paper in between your corner and that rock the whole time. It just... I, yeah, I tried, I tried really hard not to think about that one at all. It was like, I am long in this space. It's going to be tight. I can do this. Driving a Jeep and having a spotter is like yin and yang, like you have to have it. A good spotter is gonna get you through, especially if you're trying to avoid body damage, because basically when you're doing these obstacles, you're putting your Jeep and your, not life, but basically the whole experience in their hands for you going up and either falling over or making up the obstacle. So it's, it's a big thing. Dan decides he wants to come down that first obstacle uh, like a maniac. Maniac. I gotta go now. There's a GoPro on here. You locked me in. Tell Oscar he needs to be careful in case I gotta hit it. I'm nervous at this. Now. He grabbed his dad's helmet, got up there, had Oscar spotting him. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. He came down it. I mean, he hit the gas a little bit at the bottom, but really with no issue. He yeah. did stall it right at the end. So he was hanging there for a second while he cranked it back up, but he made it. I had a great time. And yeah, if I have an opportunity to come back and wheel Kingman, it's gonna happen. It was an amazing weekend, you know, we got to wheel with all kinds of different types of vehicles, different personalities and stuff, and I had a blast. Definitely another American Crawl. Uh, met a lot of new people, met a lot of uh, friends as well. So super excited to be on the next one, and I will definitely be back. We are here in Kingman, Arizona at the Rickety Cricket Brewing, having a dinner, wrapping up the event for the weekend. So if you come to Kingman, you should probably try this place. They have good really good beer too. This is a mango wheat. I feel like after the last two days, we definitely deserve this. Oh, mm. cheers to that, Dennis. That's what I'm saying. Mm. We are gonna go enjoy the party. Absolutely. Give away a bunch of raffle items from a lot of awesome brands that support us. Some amazing brands. If you want to come to a Great American Crawl, thegreatamericancrawl.com, sign up, it's absolutely free. At every one of these events this year, we're giving away a free set of tires at the 40 inch from Mickey Thompson, free set of wheels from Dirty Life, exhaust from MagnaFlow, batteries from Odyssey, coupons for like hundreds of dollars off from PRP, Yuko. Skosh, Baja Designs, S-Pod. Oh, I want to say about five or $6,000 per stop this year. We're giving away. Thank you to Mickey Thompson for helping us out and get all this stuff you. done. Good and awesome time. But we are going to get in there where it's warm. It is about to dump on us. This is for the free set of wheels from Dirty Life. Yeah. And the winner of the up to 40 inch tires from Mickey Thompson.
beautiful. Do we hug? No, it's, it's an done. interview, bro. Oh, oh my bad. <laughs> and Daryl's dad, right? Yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, what's Daryl's dad's name? Dan's. No, no, Dan. Dan I Dan. said it right. Dan's. Oh, is he Daryl? Yes. Oh. Daryl is yeah. Dan's dad. And I gotcha. said Daryl. Okay. Mother. Hey.